while we're waiting, on, let me uh, ask you to From do it all on the block. <laughs> Family and friends are gathered this very, very special day in the presence of God, our Father, Creator, Redeemer, and Savior, to witness the holy matrimony of Hudson Smith and Alvin Clark, instituted by God and signifying the union of Christ and His Church. Let us pray. Oh, gracious Heavenly Fathers, we come before Your throne now, pray God. We thank you for each and every one that's here today in support of this young couple. Father, the biggest support, though, we ask is your mighty hand to be upon them. Father, as we've talked and conversed about so many things, and Father, we know that you're in the midst. And Father, we ask that you be the center of their lives. Father, we ask for your hand to be so upon them and bless them in the mighty and magnificent way that they may be a servant unto you. And as we join them together, Father, through your word, we ask again that you you be with them throughout their life, that they remain to be what you've called them to be. In Christ's precious and holy name, amen. amen. You may be seated. Now, as we, in the presence of God, before... Um, before whom all secrets of our hearts are disclosed and having considered the holy covenant you're about to make and declare your pledge of faith to one another, be comforted that in keeping these vows, He will bless you, your marriage, and establish your home in peace. And at this time, Hudson and Alden will assemble a unity cross. And it's a beautiful sculpture, as you'll see momentarily. And uh, they will display this in their home, and it will be a reminder, a reminder to them of the covenant that they've made with one another, as well as a reminder that God is the center and the creator and the maker of all these things. And that it'll be something that they can share with one another as they go throughout their journey of life. Now, before I bring the table up and we, we share, this, share these things, in Genesis 1, 26, God said, 
Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. And he did so. He created man to be strong, a leader, a protector of his wife and his family. says that the husband loved your wife, even as Christ so loved the church, and gave himself for it, as you give of yourself to all. And in Genesis chapter 2, 23-23, tells us that the rib was taken from man because man didn't have the helper. And he took a rib of man and he designed a woman. So intricate, so beautiful did he make woman. To be that helper that he was so lacking because he was empty and void until he had this. Now with the intricate and beautiful detail of this part, we want to take them together because we understand this in joining together as the rib was taken, we also understand that when the rib was taken, that the woman is to be beside man, not out in front, nor behind, nor vice versa, but to be joined together as one. Now as you repeat these vows, 
look at one another as you say them because you're not marrying me. Okay? Now, will you want to take the altar to be your lawful wedded wife? Now repeat after me. I will take her to have and to hold from this day forward for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish till death do us part. According to God's holy word, this is my solemn vow. Now, will you all didn't take Hudson to be your lawful wedded husband to have and to hold and repeat these words. <coughs> I lost my words. I'll take the Hudson to be my wedded husband to have and to hold from this day forward for better or for worse. For richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, till death do us part, according to God's holy word, this is my solemn vow. Now, only love is what keeps a marriage together, and in 1 Corinthians 13, um, we, we see that is described in God's Word better than in no other way possible. In, in chapter 13, verse 4, it says, Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. And charity vaunteth not itself and is not puffed up. Now, we find the word we were talking about a while ago about cherish, to cherish one another. This is where it comes from, from the word charity. Charity is the strongest form of love. That's why God put it in this manner. Instead of us just reading just to love, because we, we misconstrue love so many ways and change it in so many ways. But through this, it's perfect. It's a perfect love. Love, charity, does not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked. Thinketh no evil. Rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Bears all things, believes all things, hopeth all things, and endures all things. Charity, the love of Christ, never fails. Now, if we will, do we have the rings? See, the ring signifies an outward and visible sign of an inward and spiritual grace signifying the uniting of you two. This marriage is a holy matrimony and it is done through Christ. And as we place these rings on each other's fingers, I want us to remember the love that Christ has for us, the love that you have for one another. You see, they're untarnished. We want to keep our marriage untarnished. There's no beginning and no end. That's the way God's love has been for us and always will be. And it will always remain strong as yours will be for one another. 
Now, Hudson, if you would take the ring placed on her left hand and repeat after me with this ring. I thee wed in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay? If placed on his left hand. And I'll repeat after me. With this ring, I thee wed in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, by the power vested in me, I now pronounce you husband and wife, Mr. <laughs> <laughs> Bride. Now I present to you, Mr. and Mrs. Husband Smith.